Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. If you are there, you can read. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools this, 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 despise what? Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Of wisdom. So that means the Bible is saying that um, if you desire wisdom, what is the first thing to get? Huh? The fear of the Lord. So, wisdom does not exist in free states. If you are a science student and you are a good science student, you understand what I'm saying. When I say something does not exist in free states, it means that thing does not stand alone. So if you really desire the wisdom of God, then you must go for what? The fear of God. So it is the fear of God in you that bets the wisdom of God that you need. Are you with me? There are types of wisdom. There's the wisdom of this world, and there's the wisdom of God. Are you there? The wisdom of this world is corrupt, but the wisdom of God is clean, pure. Are you with me? So wisdom is founded on the fear of the Lord. So how do I know a man that is operating by the wisdom of God, not just having the wisdom. Are you there? Because you may have a wisdom, and yes, that wisdom is not of God. Are you there? Let me give you an example. It takes wisdom to cheat in exam. Do you believe that? Ah. It takes what? Some of us are guilty of this, but the Lord has saved us, so you don't need to feel bad. When I say cheat, somebody says, you are saved now. You are saved now. But it takes wisdom to cheat in exam. Successfully. Amen. <laughs> but that wisdom is not what? We bind the devil in the name of Jesus. You know why I'm saying that? Somebody is now flashing back to the way he was doing the paper. It's not necessary. You are free now. Let me share my story with you. When I was in secondary school, I was the fellowship president. And then being the fellowship president as a teenage boy, of course the hand of the Lord was upon my life. I teach on Sundays and it was powerful. The fellowship began to grow to a point where we have teachers coming to the fellowship. So it was as a fellowship president, as a teenager, that I began to receive something that can be called tight from my teachers. I don't even know what tight is. But one day, my teacher called me and said, take. And when I was going, the Lord said, that's tight, tight, tight. Amen. That was when I knew, okay, it's like, as a student, nice as three boy, I'm already collecting what? Tight. So teachers come to my fellowship, more than one, they come. And by the same wisdom, when I'm in their class, I behave. I get what I'm saying. You know, it's possible for you to misbehave. She be Wisdom. We help you to behave. You see, that wisdom that helps you to misbehave is not the wisdom of what? So what's my emphasis? My emphasis was that, um, you know, we were told that those days that um, you cannot pass this promotion exam, the WIAC exam, you know, promotion exam to institution because it's very hard. So a lot of people were saving for the day of adversity. Amen. <laughs> You know, the Bible says, he that fainted in the day of adversity as a what? As a little saint. <laughs> so people were saving for the day of adversity. They were saving money and then so that they will not faint in the day of adversity. But because I know I do not have plan to cheat, I began to read. I began to read. I increased my reading. I read chemistry to a point I slept off. 
I had a dream that I was doing practical in the lab. <laughs> that was when I knew that something has happened to me. And when I woke, my head was not balanced. It was, my, it was like I had died and then my spirit just came to stroll on head. It took me days to recover from the, the encounter I had with chemistry. So the exam day came. Then my first paper was in Yoruba. And in school, I've always been having, I don't have issues with Yoruba. Even French, I have A there, so. I know I have my way. People were cheating as usual, bringing out of their savings to survive the deals of, of adversity. But I choose to draw from the treasure of the readings that I've made to survive. First paper gone. Meanwhile, they were so benevolent with the ungodliness that they called the options openly in the all. Very kind people. Amen. <laughs> very what? Kind. They were very kind. Number one, B. Number two, C in the exam. Very benevolent set of people. They were showing us love and care. Even we that did not contribute, they, they called it openly. And then I, I chose to test the spirit that was making those dictations. So I wrote a few of the options in a separate sheet to compare with what I've picked. And I discovered that unfortunately, the one that was even calling the thing was a foolish fellow. Because even the helper needs to be helped. I discovered there was a lot of errors in the dictations. But people were writing because they needed to survive. The first paper gone, I did it myself. I continued. Second paper, that means to second paper, a teacher came to me who is also serving as a pastor in, in one of the biggest churches in Nigeria. Came to me and said, Son, I know that you have decisions not to cheat. But I will advise you Whatever they are eating is what you should eat. There's this Yoruba saying that says, Untoban jelon runiko shekini That was the simple analysis the man gave me. And the word was so powerful in my mind that it began to shake my convictions not to cheat. Finally, the day of English, my principal, very street woman, yet she was an English expert. So the exam was on, I faced my book, writing the things I know, and I'm sure of, doing it with confidence. And my principal, that wicked fellow. Now, my principal is not wicked. She is just very strict. But it, it happens to be that I'm one of the few, selected few, that found favor in her eyes. Even teachers are afraid of her. She appears teachers to them. <laughs> She's as serious as that. And then, because I found favor in her, in, in her sight, she was even the one that supplied all the textbooks I used, the textbook I, I read for WIAC, chemistry. But those textbooks were strange. I've never seen them before. But they were detailed. On the day of English, the teacher came, the principal now came, just strolling in the hall. And of course, you know the first person she's going to check, the one that has found favor in her sight came to my table. You know, some of us have witnessed that before. You are doing an exam, your, quest, your teacher comes to your table and opens your script without your permission. Just grab your script and say, and then open and open. If they, say, if they know their head like this, you are saved. If they do like this, you are finished. <laughs> and then after checking my booklet, my principal shouted, I said, if Anu can write this, it means everybody has failed in this, in this hall. She went in to fortify herself with answers to questions and brought it to my desk. Start writing and then let's pass this around. I could not say no because I knew that she is the lion of the tribe of the school. <laughs> she's, so, she's so terrible that she can tear the paper and say, you face this, you face this exam. Nobody will hold that responsible. She has, she, you, if you know her testimony, you will know she has grace. I had no choice 
I began to go against my convictions. And it was so strange that um, I told myself I'm not going to pay. Of course, I did not pay, but people began to pay for me. May God help us. So I was now enjoying the goodies from corruption. Meanwhile, the Lord was waiting for me to. God was with me in the exam. Even when I was, I was doing the cheating not with a full attention. My mind was not there, but I was just doing it because I have to. Unknown to me, unknown to me, I mean, unknown to me that when I, unknown to me that when I, each time I submit my script, the angel of the Lord cleans the ones that I copied and leaves the one that I know there. If I had known, I would not even try to copy it. So if I, if I copied three, if I wrote three questions or four from the board and I did five, the Lord will cancel the four and leave the five. So the marker will see the five. How did I know? Okay. It was when the result came. The people that were not brilliant, they had A, 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 A. I did not have one A like this. <laughs> you know, in admission criteria, they used to say, minimum of five credits. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> yeah. My entry to the university was with a minimum eh, of five credits. That minimum was what I had. That minimum for me was the maximum. So I had just five credits. That's all. It was clear that a spirit followed my script and said, you will cheat. We will remove the cheating. <laughs> and when the dollars got their results, it was so clear that the corruption favored them. But I don't know why it has refused to what? To favor the Lord. And to worsen the matter, to make the five credits, Yoruba was part. So it may, may God help us. Credit in math, credit in English, credit in biology, credit in physics, credit in Yoruba. That's all. <laughs> that was how I escaped into the institution. I did not get admission, I escaped into. And when I was picking my course, I picked the very strange one, physics, mathematics, and I got it to show that God was involved. Why am I saying this? It takes wisdom to what? To cheat. Meanwhile, if you now look at me now, you cannot even trace me to that kind of result. Because I have advanced in knowledge. And I'm still advancing. The same person that had just the five, are you there? I've trained students that, I remember one girl that was crying profusely. The father traveled to Abuja, called her to pacify her, no. Promised to buy gifts, no. People were begging her, calling people, no. She, the mother had to call me. And what was the case? She got a result and she saw a B. And she almost died in the house. I've trained students like that. This was the one that had C. Just five C. Are you with me? What school gives you is paper. The real result is in the work that you have done on yourself. Are you with me? You must work on yourself to a point whereby if they compare your present knowledge state to your past knowledge state, there should be a clear difference. There should be what? Clear difference. The same person that has taught people to have 300 above in, in jam. When I did my jam, what did I have? I saw it in a revelation. I thought it, it was a joke. I saw 175. I said, it cannot be my own because I was the one teaching people. When I did the jump, 
by the grace of God, I saw one seventy-five. Meanwhile, those things were God's system. Because at that time, if those things do not happen, I will not even go to school. Because I knew that I watched more than that anyway. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to see how you can become when you work on yourself. It is better to come out with a third class and be living like a first class in the real life than to come out with a first class and be living the third class kind of life in real life. Invest in knowledge. What did I say? I remember when we were doing screening. A lady right before me, they asked her a simple question in chemistry. Meanwhile, a result. A, 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 B, 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 A, 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 B, B, B. Come on. If you... <laughs> if the lady presents a result and I present my own maximum minimum, you understand that? <laughs> they will tear my own. <laughs> because it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a combination of shameful grades. They will tear, they will, before they look at how they first tear my own, so that there will not be condemnation. They asked her a simple question in chemistry. She was looking like Lukman. I was the one echoing the answer from behind her. The one that had A, B. What am I trying to say? You need to work on yourself to a degree where it will be clear to the world that you are better than who you used to what? B. I can tell you, I read most in my life when I finished school. Till now, I'm still reading. Till now. Till now, I'm still reading. Yesterday, when I say till now, I still read this one. That's my life. Till now. Don't come out with something that will contradict your current reality. It means you are not living a good life. The part of the job should be from glory to what? To glory. There are people that have A all true. Check them now. Ask them to solve simple questions. They don't even know it. First class in maths. I, I, I heard the story of someone who had a first class in mathematics. Of course, when they know you have first class, they, they treat you with a kind of preferential treatment. They ask, they ask the person to take math. And then he was doing M, 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 M on the board. They had to substitute the first class student with another person from, I didn't hear me here, who, who was able to take the math well. Meanwhile, the one that finished with first class from, I will not mention the name of the university, could not perform. Are you there? I don't know who the Lord is speaking to. This is God's encouragement to you. It doesn't matter the result you have. Are you there? You can show to the world that you are better. You can what? By working on yourself. So what is the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is the kind of wisdom that you get from the fear of the Lord that is in your heart. Are you there? So if you don't fear God, you cannot operate with the wisdom of God. Are you there? If you want to know the kind of wisdom with which a man is operating, check the fear of what? Check the fear of God in his heart. You cannot claim you are operating by the wisdom of God when the fear of the Lord does not have a place in your what? In your heart. Are you with me? Okay. So what does wisdom do? Wisdom is what helps you to apply the things you know. Knowledge without wisdom will not bet result. Will not what? Yes. What gives credence to knowledge is wisdom. Because if you have knowledge, it means you know something. Are you there? But by wisdom, you will be able to apply that which you know. So wisdom is in application. Wisdom is in what? Knowledge is in knowing. Knowledge is in what? Are you with me? 
What do you want to cook? Rice. That's knowledge. That's what? Knowledge. What kind of rice? Jollof rice. That's knowledge. Understanding is what we now tell you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Understanding will now help you to know the ingredients you need to add. Are you there? The ingredients you will need to get to what? To what? Huh? To prepare the what? The jollof that you need. Are you there? Wisdom is what we now tell you the quantity of salt to add, quantity of money, that's wisdom. So wisdom is an application. Knowledge helps you to know what you want to cook. By understanding, you gather the ingredients. By wisdom, you apply the ingredients you have gathered so that the salt will not be too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you with me? So every child of God is expected to operate by what kind of wisdom? Huh? Wisdom. So what is so special about the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is that which helps you to do the will of God. The, will of, the wisdom of God will make it simple. It will make it easy for you to do the things that God is asking you to do. If God speaks to you, you will need its wisdom to carry out that instruction. Are you there? If you have heard God, you will need what? His wisdom to what? To carry out that word, that instruction. And you must understand that the Bible told us that wisdom is profitable for what? For direction. Am I right? It therefore means that the profit you can make from wisdom is hidden in the instructions that you are getting from that wisdom. Are you with me? Look at this. You can be wise, and yet, your marriage is not working. Do you know it's possible? Hmm? And then your life will now begin to create a kind of confusing picture, because they know you are wise, but why is it that your marriage is not working? You know why? It will mean that that wise man is not paying to the instructions, is not paying attention to the instructions of wisdom regarding what? Marriage. Wisdom will instruct you on every aspect of life. That's what you must understand. Wisdom will what? Wisdom will inspe- it will it will instruct you on every what aspect of life, including finance. So, if wisdom is instructing you in the area of finance, and you are not paying attention to it, you will be a poor, wise man. If wisdom is instructing you in the direction of health, and you are not paying attention to it, you will be a sick, what? Wise man. So the deficiencies that we see in our lives are the results of our disobedience to the instructions of wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? The deficiencies that we see in our lives are the what? are the results of our what? Our disobedience to the instructions of wisdom. The deficiencies we see in our lives are the result of our disobedience to what? To the instructions of wisdom. So what makes you live a perfect life is in your obedience to the instructions of what? Of wisdom. I want to see how I can work with these topics and speak on them briefly. Exodus 1 verse 10. Exodus what? 1 verse 10. Yes. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let them multiply Lest they multiply. And it came, and it come to pass. Yes. That when they are pointed out any war. Yes. They join us so on to our enemies. Yes. And fight the good for Praise them. the Lord. Thank you. Let us deal wisely with them so that they will not what? Multiply. That statement is coming from what? A kind of wisdom. But that wisdom is not the wisdom of God. One thing to note is this. A man that does not fear God 
huh? cannot display the wisdom of God. It doesn't matter how unique what he's doing is. That thing is not the wisdom of God. It is the wisdom of God that helps you to do things that glorify God. Every wisdom functions to glorify the giver. Are you there? Every wisdom does what? Every wisdom functions to glorify the giver. So if it is the wisdom of God, then each time the wisdom functions in you, God will be glorified. God will be glorified. So every wisdom functions to glorify what? The giver. So the wisdom of Egypt, in this context, that wisdom you saw there, let us deal with them wisely, lest they multiply. That wisdom is a corrupt wisdom. Are you there? Can I tell you something? As I speak now, the wisdom of Egypt is, ex- is in existence. You see what? The wisdom of Egypt is that kind of wisdom that fights progress. The wisdom of Egypt is an anti-progress wisdom. So when, when the wisdom of Egypt sees that uh, somebody is progressing, it defies a means to what? To stop. Now look at this. As long as your Joseph is alive, the, kingdom, the wisdom of Egypt will not have effect on your life. As long as what? Your Joseph is alive. Can I tell you something? Hmm? You will do a lot of, you will do yourself a lot of harm when you choose not to pray for people that you know God is using to bless you. You are doing yourself a lot of harm. Are you there? Peter never thought that he could go back to fishing until Jesus left. Suddenly the thought came that, are you getting what I'm saying? Men are not God. Are you there? But there are men that on the strength of the impact they have made in your life, if they leave, you feel the vacuum. Are you with me? Men are not what? But there are men that if you miss them, you have missed something. That, that vacuum will be created. This is why you must ensure that you support your Joseph in the place of prayer. You know, the, the wisdom of Egypt was in existence, yet the, the Israelites were enjoying in the same Egypt. Meaning that Joseph became their umbrella. And as long as Joseph was alive, the wisdom of Egypt, though existing, but yet could not have any impact on them. There are some things you will not feel because you are under covering. There's somebody giving you instruction. Do this. Don't do that. Go and do this and send me feedback. The day you shift from that covering, that's when you will know that there's another kind of wisdom. Are you with me? You see, it all started like a testimony. Later, it became a curse. Later, it became the fulfillment of a negative prophecy. When the family of Joseph were going into Egypt, it was like what? It was a testimony. Yes. Because at that time, it was famine. Things were not really going well. So when they came into Egypt, Joseph spoke to Pharaoh to give them a very good place, a place where there are, there are grasses. Are you there? That reminds me, I won't mention it. His sister, the sister is here. She said, Sir, is it not that Joseph is lying? I can't remember the verse, but it's from Exodus. I said, If Joseph hear this thing you are saying from your mouth now, <laughs> praise the Lord. When Joseph went to Pharaoh, he spoke to the king to give them a place where. They, there are what grasses because they, they, those people are they are shepherds they are coming with their animals and the animals we need to feed on what so that was that was why Joseph requested that they give them a place called what Goshen 
So when they got to Goshen, they were not the only ones that were comfortable. Even their animals were what? If you are in the will of God, you are not the only one that will feel comfort. Your animals must also be comfortable. Are you with me? There are people that will say, I love you. And they know you have singing gifts. I love you, but please don't sing this. I don't like all those. I don't like people singing. That person does not what? If they really love you, they will love your animals. Your animals are the things that are attached to you by the will of God. Are you with me? A single mother, you know, a mother had a child and then the husband died. And according to biblical standard, she is qualified to marry. And then she met a man. The man says, lady, I love you so much. But what are we going to do with this child? What is, it, what, what is the man saying? I don't what? Because if you love me, you should love my animal. The things that are attached to me. Are you with me? So when they came into Egypt, it was all the testimony. They were enjoying themselves. And then they were prospering in Egypt. I hope you know that the people that came were just one family, right? And that family became nation in Egypt. That's prosperity. Are you with me? They were prospering under <laughs> the wisdom of Egypt. You see, as long as the wisdom of Egypt does not have effect on your life, prosperity will not be had. It will be a normal experience. But the moment, you see, the wisdom of Egypt functions to fight prosperity. Such that you will not even prosper in health. Not to talk of in wealth. Are you there? Are you with me? So they were prospering. A family came in. That family became a nation. In the same Goshen. Where the wisdom of Egypt was at work. And why were they not affected? Because uh, Joseph was... What I'm trying to say is, there are some truths you are enjoying now because certain people are available. That's what I'm trying to say. If they are not there, you will feel it. Please note this. Men are not God. Are you there? Never forget that. There's no man that is a God. But on the strength of impact, there are men that you will feel their absence. Are you with me? And the, their absence in your life can create a, a vacuum that you will forever regret. Because there are some people that they rebelled against their father and the Lord to go and marry one strange brother. And the man said, don't marry. And they still went ahead to marry. Now, they can't divorce. And they don't have peace. Forever they will regret that disobedience, that rebellion. Are you with me? So the wisdom of Egypt is not the wisdom of what? Of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a corrupt wisdom. A wisdom that, that functions to prevent prosperity. That turns a king into a slave. So the day that Joseph died, the Bible now made us to understand that and a, a, a pharaoh arose that does not know who? Joseph. And the reason this pharaoh does not know Joseph was because at that time Joseph had died. I hope you know. The question is, how will he not know Joseph? Have you not, have you not had that kind of thought before? Can I tell you something? Joseph was so effective, so productive in Egypt that according to history, there are still rules, laws that today are still implemented in the land of Egypt. Are you there? That those, there are still some laws in Egypt, as I speak now, that came from the administration of Joseph. See now. It's in the Bible. Can you see that? It's, the, that law is law in economics, how to handle finance, Either how to run the economy of the nation. Joseph brought those things. Can I show you one of the things that Joseph brought? Joseph 
by wisdom, now created a platform. He said, um, everybody from whatever you have, this is the portion that everybody must be giving to the Pharaoh. To Pharaoh. Are you there? Being the head. Are you there? That was where the mystery of paying tax came from. It was Joseph that caught it. The mystery of what? Pain. That wisdom came from Joseph. Are you not paying tax in Nigeria? I know you might, it's not, it may not be a reality to you, but is there, is there nothing like tax payment in Nigeria? Is it not across the world? It came from Joseph. That's to show you how the, the, the impact that Joseph made in Egypt, their eternal impact, forever it will be there. So how can you now say you don't know huh? Joseph? How? But that's what the scripture told us. Do you know why? There was a prophecy hanging on the Israelites that they will go into slavery because of what Abraham, their forefathers, did. When he went to offer sacrifice and he stood hiding and he chased the bed, God spoke. That prophecy had to be fulfilled. So it was for the prophecy to be fulfilled that the new Pharaoh now forgot. The memory flashed from his head. So that he did not know Joseph is not ordinary. It has a spiritual backing. Are you there? So that means it is, you see, hey, have you not had this experience before? You came into the exam hall, may it not happen to you. But there are people that experience it. They come to the exam hall prepared, and then when they got there, everything vanished. I mean, everything vanished. Has it happened to anybody here before? It, it, it has happened to you. They, it has happened to you before. They went, you, hey, yeah, sorry. They went blank. They went what? Blank. It happened to me once. I was messed up that day. And I cannot cheat. Mathematics of all course. I don't fear math in my life. Math. I was looking at it like this. Do you know the funniest part of that thing? As I was looking at the question, I know that I know it. That's, that, that, that was the only thing they left with me. The knowledge that I know. That's all. But to write, no, there's no, no way. Huh? That's the wisdom. When you begin to forget things that you are not supposed to forget, the sign that the wisdom of Egypt is at work in your life. That strange wisdom was what flashed the memory from the new Pharaoh. How will you say you don't know Joseph? Even the law that the new Pharaoh is coming to work with, Joseph made it. How will you not say you don't know him? No, it's not possible. It has a spiritual hand. God was responsible because that must happen for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You catch what I'm saying? Can I tell you something? It was when I came out of the exam, the test. I don't know if, 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 the, if that was the same thing that happened to you. Eh? Exactly. When I stepped out and the test was over, I can't cheat. When I came out, then everything now. I did like this. <laughs> the show had ended. There's no way you can enlist. You can't perform anything again. I had to accept my fate. I think at the end, I, I, I ended up having, I think, maybe seeing that mathematics. One strange math like this, or Gibra, those. There was nothing I could do. I get what I'm saying. That's the wisdom of what? So the wisdom of Egypt functions as the epi to forget things that are needed. Remember, you see, if you are fighting forgetfulness, you will need to conquer the wisdom of Egypt. Because they will help you to forget things that are necessary to your life, necessary information, because they want to bring you into bandage. The target is to bring you to captivity. But they will start by helping you to forget certain things that are needed for your life. And if you are forgetting things, it's not a serious, it's not a simple matter. You have to conquer the wisdom of Egypt. Do you know that, how does God give wealth? You know, the Bible says God gives the power to make wealth. 
How does God give the power to make work? Through ideas. The idea will just come, do this. You can be making this kind of soap. Are you there? You can be doing this while you're in school and you'll be getting one. Are you there? Comes as an idea. Let, eh? If you are now fighting forgetfulness, what happens? Can you see the problem now? So, as long as the wisdom of Egypt is at work, wealth will be replaced with wretchedness. Are you there? The one that is supposed to be rich will be what? Wretched. Poor. Because of the wisdom of Egypt. Because each time the idea comes, he will forget. The only thing he will remember is that the idea came. <laughs> have you had this scenario before? You have the dream. You know you had the dream, but you can't tell what you saw in the dream. It's the wisdom of Egypt. The wisdom of Egypt, when it becomes very strong, the victim will be so frustrated. Hiya. You will read for five hours, and the five hours will not, it will be like you, you only rest for 30 minutes. And they know you as a reader, but your result is usually, they will even say, they know the enemy is a shallow word, but they will say, what's your name again? This cannot be you. It's the wisdom of what? That is the wisdom that sponsors the wickedness of the wicked. There's something called the wickedness of the wicked. Have you heard that before? It takes the wisdom of Egypt to execute wickedness successfully. Wisdom of Egypt. There is no wicked person that is not functioning by the wisdom of Egypt. Not one. Because that's the dark wisdom. And unfortunately some of our leaders they function by what? The wisdom of what? Unfortunately even certain people in their household of faith also function with this strange wisdom. Unfortunately. The political leaders some of them, they won't do what they're supposed to do when it's time for election. Of course, they will make you go hungry. And then when it's time to vote, they want to be re-elected, they begin to serve money, huge sum of money, 20,000. Please, the one that has not eaten for, that has not eaten good food for one week, now sees money, 20,000, just to vote. Wouldn't the person be tempted to collect the money? You now begin to hear different strange philosophy. Is it not just to put hand like this? Chebika Kotekan, 20,000. Please, how many fingers? You know why? The wisdom of Egypt is what? It's at work. The Bible made us to understand that when the righteous rules, the people will rejoice. But when the wicked rules, the people suffer. You know why? The wicked rules with the wisdom of what? Egypt. Egypt. So before you bring in a person as your leader, check the kind of wisdom the person is operating with. Otherwise, you will suffer. You will what? I remember, I remember one time, I drank Gary to a point that I became one with the Gary. <laughs> May God help. I passed through certain seasons. And God is still, of course, there's still a lot, but God is still, I passed through some really crazy seasons of my life. I know God is still, of course, we are not there yet, but I think it's better than those periods. At least, even if it is just little change, it's, it's still better. That period. I was not doing one simple lesson like this. I was the only one at all. So I told the children, you come with your money. It's in my house. One thing is they know that this one knows something. So he has something on this. So the parents release their children. How much? Maybe 15 and a half per, per child. About seven of them. Or maybe 10. So when they come, some of them will even say, we'll bring the money tomorrow. Say, Jesus. <laughs> with this 15 era. <laughs> my mommy say, hey, we'll so my mommy say, I, 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 I'll bring everything on Friday. What? 
What if you meet me dead tomorrow? <laughs> I drank Gary to a point I became one with the Gary. I don't know. My best song that time was Jim Reeves' songs. <laughs> I, oh my God. I downloaded God bless you. I fly away, oh glory, I fly. My best song was Across the Bridge. Well, that was the song I was doing. Because I know any moment from that. <laughs> Salem, we go to Jerusalem. <laughs> that was my song. I walk night and day. Once I'm done with the lesson, I, I return to my gym reels. Follows their footsteps. I don't know why I've not even died. When the wisdom of Egypt prospers on a person's life, his skills, his talents will not count. Because this wisdom forms an umbrella over lives. So if it is operating over your life, the wisdom will now form an umbrella over you. So the things you are doing will not be seen. Look at this. The Bible says, the labor of fools wearies them, for they know not the way to the city. You know why? They are laboring. What, what are they laboring for? To get to the city. Yet they do not know the way to the city. The wisdom of Egypt has confused them. So they will labor, but it will not count. Because they do not know the way to where? The city. One of the signs to show, one of the signs you see in your life to show that the wisdom of Egypt is now prospering in your life is confusion. I mean, constant confusion. When you always find out that you are always getting confused. Are you there? When little things happen, you are confused. When you are, read, you are confused. Are you there? Little things bring you into confusion. If you are that kind of person, it's a sign that you are operating under the wisdom of Egypt. Because God said boldly, I am not the author of what? Confusion. Let's check one more verse and then we wrap up this teaching. Let's check Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Yes. Verse 40. Yes. And the child grew. And the child grew. And was strong. And was strong. In spirit. Mm -hmm. Filled with wisdom. Yes. And the grace of God was upon him. Praise the Lord. He was strong in what? The spirit. Are you with me? Your obedience to the spirit of God is what brings you into the realness of the wisdom of God. You know what? You see, the, if you find a man that is operating by God's wisdom, are you there? Where is the wisdom in the man? Now, let me, let me ask you this question. Where is the wisdom of God in a man? Where is it? Huh? But yes, obedience is part. But you see, the wisdom of God in you is in the spirit of God in you. So anytime that spirit, the spirit of God in you, gives you an instruction and you obey it, People will see the wisdom of God in that thing you are doing. That's how to, that's how to display the wisdom of God. Are you there? It's not like you have it. It's the spirit that has it. But that's how that spirit operates. That, op that spirit operates by the wisdom of God. So anytime you carry out his instructions, you display his wisdom. That's how to display the wisdom of God. Are you there? So they have, this one is bringing us to a conclusion that it is impossible for an unbeliever to operate by the wisdom of God because they don't have the spirit of God in them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Any question? So we have been able to rush through three topics. The fear of God, the wisdom of God, and the wisdom of Egypt. Any question? Can we bow our heads and say thank you, Jesus? We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth 
should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. To the Lord, all the glory must be to the Lord. To the Lord, for He is worthy, worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to Himself. All the glory must be. One more time. To the Lord, all the glory must be to the to the Lord, for He is worthy, worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to Himself. All the glory. Can you get your guitar? Eshe, eshe, o baba. Awa morendu. Eshe, o eshe. Lift your voice. Oh, oh, Eshe, eshe. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Let's rise to our feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah, you are. Jehovah. That song is powerful. Jehovah. Aya. The angel says you are. Ah, oh, the angel says you are. The angel says we join the host of heaven to say, Aya. Hey, Jehovah. Come close. Hey, Jehovah. Jehovah. Ah, Jehovah, over our families, you are the most high. Jehovah, over our future, you are the most high. Hey, Jehovah, you are the most high. Lord, you are the reason we are singing, Jehovah. Yeah, you are the reason why we are singing Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high. You are the most high. You are the most high.
As a family, ah, Jehovah, for the next thing you will do, hey, Jehovah, for the success of today's program, Jehovah, for disappointing the expectations of the enemy, oh, yeah. But now you are still talking, no? Ay, 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 ay. Hey, hey, Jehovah. They say they can reduce your volume, but now you are speaking loud. Ay, Hey, Jehovah. Why not you do so? God, yes, you shall never know. Jehovah, Jehovah, 